Welcome all to the fifth episode of this AU lore rambling series. Woo! This episode will be focusing on the rather spookier sides in celebration of Halloween. For this is a Halloween special. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one. One of the world's worth in Sutteries engines, number four, Billy Derbyton to be exact, was rebuilt with larger buffers in 1927 following an accident. Shortly after, he was sold into a dust reuse at the China Clay Pits near Brandon and was thus repainted into a pale gray livery. Billy was one of the earliest engines at the clay pits and will be later joined by Bill and Ben. By 1938, he was the last engine from the long gone Wells Earth and Suttery Railway. In 1949, an avalanche occurred and Billy was killed in the events that ensued, unfortunately, and he was scrapped shortly after. The last of the Wells Earth and Suttery was gone. We fast forward to around 1969 or so when Bill was finishing up his shifts for the night where he claims to have seen a glowing silhouette of what appeared to be the late Billy Derbyton shunting a lot of trucks as if nothing happened. Other witnesses claim that Billy's whistle was heard blaring across the worksite, but these never really amounted to any evidence following investigation, only significant bits of evidence being the witness accounts of Bill, Ben, and a few others. But regardless, it is believed that every year around the anniversary of the accident, that you could see Billy Derbyton's ghost just going around business as usual. Number 2 On a lighter note, every Halloween, a huge firework display is held at Ulfstead. Most of the engines often attend after finishing their work. Oftentimes, a bunch of ghost stories are shared amongst the engines, and for some, this is the biggest highlight of their year. Number 3 Across the waterways, at Big City Railroad, they have a tradition where on October 31st every year, the crew members end the day early so they can be with their families for the holiday. And of course, like many other places, a few ghost stories have passed around amongst the engines and staff alike. Notably one of Big City Railroad number one, which I might go into another video in the distant future. So look out for that, I guess. Number four. Mavis arrived at Farquhar Quarry in 1964, like in the railway series, and became its main shunting engine. And she arrived in all black and remained in this livery until 1968. Mavis chose to have her side plates are painted to a vibrant red, which is still sports to this very day. Number 5. During the Scarlowie Railway's expansion in the late 60s, there were multiple reported sightings of ghosts of Smudger and Stanley in the valley where they last were before they died. And how these were reported amongst Scarlowie Railway workers is because the Scarlowie Railway had bought up most of their land as it just went into government hands, pretty much. It was a fairly complicated mess. Anyway, so, the reportings of these ghosts were amongst most of the railway workers and surprisingly Duncan, who claimed to have seen the glowing outline of smudge right in front of him. And this caused him to run away like a little bitch. Number 6. So you know when that boulder wreaked havoc on that soon to be quarry mine in 1970, right? Well, if you use it later in 75, a filmmaker actually used the idea as inspiration for a movie which was filmed on Sodor. In the film, the boulder, which was named Jacko, actually came to life and terrorized a little branch line. And the film was called Jacko Night on the Railway, and it starred a Great Western Railway 1400 and a British Railways Class L2, which were essentially loose like representations of both Thomas and Rusty. Number 7. Sodor Central Prison is located south of Kildane and was opened in 1902. There was no railway access to this prison, and whenever a sentient vehicle commits a crime, they are just towed there by lorry and were to serve out their sentence. Number 8. Wild Express Studios is the premier film studio based on Sodor and is located at Marin. It has brought masterpieces like the Jagonite Trilogy to the big screens and is absolute fan favorite studio choice amongst moviegoers on Sodor. Number 9. Mighty Mo is a name given to Murdoch in this AU. He just goes by Mo most of the time, by the way. But he was built in 1958 and he walled numbered Sodor in 1969 after he was bought in auction by the Northwestern Railway. After arriving on Sodor, he was given the option to be repainted and he chose his favorite color, orange. Orange is his favorite color as it is synonymous with his favorite part of Halloween, the jack-o'-lanterns. Murdoch loves jack-o'-lanterns. He even advocates for loads of them to be placed all around the engine sheds every year. You know what to say? Murdoch is a huge Halloween buff. Number 10. So you know how in episode 4 I said Top Hat was in 042, right? Well, I'd actually like to retcon that and make him a 260 Camelback. 
the reason I do this is because I just find it so wrong to have Top Hat, who's meant to be larger than characters like say Tencent and Little Owl and all that stuff, have them basically be even even sizes. So I figured making them a little bit larger engine is a little more proportionate. Build year and all that's still pretty much the same, just wheel configuration is the only difference. Number 11. Sodor is huge on Halloween. It is considered their biggest holiday of the year. And the celebrations across the island involve parades, parties, movie screenings, fireworks shows, the list goes on. Even the Northwestern Railway engines even get to join on the fun. They even get the chance to wear some cool decorations to celebrate. Halloween is truly popular amongst Hadrians. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.